Welcome back, everyone. Do you know the last two of Europe? I'm your host, Mr. Mokulover, and time for the briefing. Sakharovsky walked up to the projector. The collected hierarchy of the Black League sat in anticipation of his new draft. Glekloverk, comrades, the following is the general outline of our staff who has prepared for Operation Chernobog. While conventional military action will be needed to dismantle the German state, it will also be necessary to use unconventional means to assist this main objective. With this in mind, specialized units will be deployed into the heart of Germany well before the military operations commence in order to sabotage infrastructure, cause civilian casualties, and destroy the trust of the government in its military. Probing attacks must first be conducted in vulnerable areas on insignificant targets, namely isolated civilians and low-ranking officials. Utilizing information gained here on German reactions, we can target a larger-scale operation towards infrastructure and transportation systems. Critical to these attacks will be the usage of German chemical weapons. This will result in suspicion being directed towards the Wehrmacht. We can then escalate attacks towards the population, resulting in the desired split between the civilian and military leadership. Research into replicating these agents is, therefore, of high priority. With the civilian government fearing a coup from within and the military attempting to maintain order, we expect that we will be able to trigger a partial shutdown of the strategic command structure within the time span of one or two months after major operations begin. This will severely hamper any conventional or nuclear response to initial attacks. You can find an extended timeline on page 25 through 28, and a requested budget on page 33 through 39. Are there any questions? Cool. So, oh yeah, we're going to make some tanks as well, which would be awesome, awesome, awesome. Those would be very nice to have. But in addition to tanks, what would also be very nice is, well, actually, doing a focus, but uh, more planes. Basically, more planes. Oh, your first here, your first visit here, Mr. Ambassador. I feel uh, I was welcoming, was welcoming a capable and honest ambassador, but now I feel I'm saying goodbye to a friend. No one could have been more conscientious and respectful to both our countries, said the actor posing as Dmitry Yazov. The ambassador smiled. The work being done improved living conditions here in Siberia, your industrial innovations, your use of natural resources. I'm greatly impressed by what I've seen here. I believe history will record you as a great builder for the benefit of mankind, he replied. With a final handshake the, and the ambassador turning back for a final salute as he walked out the door of the famous movie Mission Omsk, portraying the perpetrated reality of life in a newly unified West Siberia faded to black. Reviews have been highly polarized, with some saying it was merely a propagandistic hack job, while this credit in innovative innovative screenplay design and the use of helicopters to capture scenes of expansive Russia as never seen before. Overall, it appears Omsk has convinced at least part of the world that the gold in its flag outshines the black and that it is a nation worth recognizing as a potential ally. Sometimes truth truth is stranger than fiction, but we must continue on with eh, warnings from within. Certain unfortunate rumors shall be investigated. Waste not, want not. Which I don't want to do yet. Actually, let's do National Avengers because we can, since this always happens every campaign for every Russian warlord. The Great Trial will be a near apocalyptic affair. The German invader will show no quarter in the crusade against civilization itself. To that end, they will deploy every weapon seized from the deepest pits of heck itself in a vain attempt to stop National Avengers from becoming real. On the long winding road to Berlin, our forces will storm through nuclear explosions and clouds of biological and chemical agents never before fired in anger. To that end, these weapons must be harnessed for use by the League for their destructive potentials unmatched by any other ordinance created by man. Nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons are the new reality of war in the modern age, and this must be accounted for in any plan for the Great Trial. Alrighty, work on these tools of, of war begun, for only when the German state is erased from the history books by force, and Russian boots march beneath the Brandenburg Gate, will national vengeance truly be completed? It's going to cost us 100 million USD every year? Well, okay then. That's not too bad. That's still not looking great. Could be worse. We're still building up some more civilian factories, which is nice. And then expand on Camara. Ooh, Division Tech and Core Territory. Ooh, that's less recovery rate. Ah, uh, the Atomic Age, we'll do that one. The average Black League soldier is in no way inferior to his German counterpart. Technologically, it would be only take several years of R&D investments to catch up to the Germans in terms of equipment. If the Reich is dying to attack us now, the Black League can retaliate, using the biological and chemical weapons developed by the old Soviet Union. However, before the League can take the fight to their so-called internal city, Germania, there's one aspect which we have no answer, the atom bomb. For our mission to succeed, the League needs to ensure the inevitability of the mutually assured destruction. For the Germans to experience what the Russia had gone through, biological and chemical weapons are not enough. No longer shall they have an upper hand above us, for they shall learn the power of vengeance, but also of love. In the atomic age, love is mad. The weapons of national vengeance to all armament department heads. Classified top secret. To truly understand the task before us to stare down death and defeat a shadow. The Germans will use every weapon imaginable against us. We must be ready with our own. Unconventional weaponry is required for what will be an uncon unconventional war. When the great trial arrives, we shall be ready. We must be all ready. To this end, several projects will be commissioned to, re to research effective unconventional weaponry and prepared to deployment on a large scale. You will be informed of your assignments in the upcoming days. All such research is classified top secret. These weapons of national vengeance will bring forth the fear of every Russian mother who lost their son, every father who saw his home and land destroyed, and every soldier who, despite the greatest efforts, saw their nation fall to ruin. We will bring home the devastation the Germans have brought upon our land. They have sown the wind. Let them reap the whirlwind. Any concerns from high-level department re lead researchers or higher officials should be directed to Glockovrick. Yes, directly. May we find our salvation in the 
mud. So at this point, uh, ooh, approach. I want to do this stuff, but because of the way we're going right now, we're still trying to core everything here too. I want to do that, but I definitely want to assemble some more readouts. Let's put it like that. Readouts are going to be kind of important for what we're going to need relatively soon. And, oh, consult with this, people. Seize Arsenal. The Four Thesis. Warnings from within. Oh, boy. Well, warnings from within, then. Cold days. Uh, uh, if you'll agree about this, go right ahead. An announcement from Nova Siberia. The Siberian state has claimed that we are an illegitimate state. Well, that's kind of worrying, but whatever. Well, there are rumors, vile, detestable, and treasonous rumors about Dmitry Karbyshev's death. These rumors claim that the founder of the All-Russian Black League, the man who was first to recognize the strength that we would need for the Great Trial, did not pass away from the old age, but rather killed himself. These rumors must be false, or our leader would have never had such reason to do such a horrible thing. We must track down the source of these foul rumors and deal with them. Now, okay, so they must have won. The yeah, Siberian Federation, okay. Okay, so, more readouts then. Uh, oh, prepare for, okay, yeah, might as well do that as well. And the atomic age. Yazov strode impatiently down the hallway after a disappointing briefing. Sakharovsky in tow. Comrade Sakharovsky, we have discussed this. We desperately require atomic weaponry. I will not tolerate delays in the program. There have already been enough issues. Clover, please, there's, there may be an alternative. Sakharovsky put his hand on Yazov's shoulders. The other was outstretched to one in many conference rooms in the bunker. Yazov turned. Explain. The primary objective of atomic weaponry is not merely the destruction of buildings or the inhabitants, but to render economic activity unviable for an extended period. While a genuine nuclear reaction is not necessary for such an event, merely spreading radioactive fallout is good enough. These radiological dispersive, dispersive devices will exactly do that. He also still looks skeptical. Nonsense. A conventional bomb will not spread the radiation nearly as far as a nuclear bomb, would it not? You are correct, Glaucomber. Even our largest conventional weapons would not have truly the desired effect. However, there are a couple advantages to these dirty bombs. One, they're easier to make, therefore we can make more available to target more cities in the trial. Two, they can be made smaller than real nuclear devices. Small enough, perhaps, to be carried by a dedicated agent to a population center. Let's make a po operation, upcoming operations far more effective. Furthermore, the effect of radiation may not be significant past a few kilometers, but the people of Germany may, will not know that, nor will they believe the government when they tell them so. Some weapons and vengeance strike at the heart, others strike at the brain. He also stood silent for a while. It was an elegant solution to a problem of limitation. Sakharovsky had outdone himself. Very well. Radioactive material will be transferred. And here we go. Uh, let's see. We have 100, so... Good. And I have got more manpower. We don't really need more factories, but I'm going to grab them anyways for now, so... So wait, just over that we have them for the future. A grand showdown. The Russian National Reclamation Group has overcome its obstacles and conquered all other nations in the way. Either through <clears throat> peaceful unification, which didn't happen, or forceful war. Now it sounds as a precipice. The vast territories of Russia are expansive, while the Russian National Reclamation Government controls a significant portion of it. There's so much more to conquer. We must begin preparing for a war that will challenge our military, unlike all the other wars that would come before us. And they shall fall. The final conflict is at hand, so be it. Alright, fallback lines, might as well make those too. Uh, very nice. Oh, a billion now. Well, that's alright. Things happen. Warring from within. Expand on Chimera. Well, I click on that, so. <clears throat> Back when we were a mere provisional authority, Project Chimera was authorized. Armed with a plank of check and the thirst for justice, a talented Major Yuri Ovchinnikov well, is overseeing the visionary program designed to create the deadliest biological agent in history for the purpose of national vengeance. Already his work has impressed the Glakovark. Out of the Slard Lulsk laboratories come reports of new strains of anthrax, capable of being packed into small shells or bombs that can rain down in Germany in the hundreds of our artillery or aircraft. This is not enough for the purposes of the Great Trial. Of Chininkov deserves more funding, more live test subjects, and more modern facilities to complete these weapons that will fall like white snow over the cities of Germany, blanketing them in the spores that will never consign their pathetic people to the dustbin of history. <clears throat> Warnings from within. It was intended to be an ordinary inspection, the Glockovic himself, along with his aides, observing the mines. He had done all the usual stunts, shook hands with the coal dust cold dusted hard-headed workers he could praise him for their dedication to victory above all else and yet before that night was over Yazov's mind would be would fracture there had always been rumors about Karbyshev's death so were they always intentional, intentionally kept from Yazov who knows how he might react when he learned the truth it is better for him to not find out the one man he could count on did what he did but then one mo swaying minor turned all the plans of dust I'm sorry for the loss of common Karbyshev Glakovark Yazov such a terrible way to go my uncle was a garden psalm as he walked out to die every eye of every eight behind Yazov opened to the size of dinner plates. A few shook their heads vigorously at the assembled miners, others just walked in sh watched in shock. I'm unsure of what you mean, comrade. Yozov's voice was slow, 
Dispassionate, analytical, quieter than usual, just a normal question, but his clenched jaw and burning stare told volumes. Even the drunk miner might must have picked up on something, but he continued. Well, comrade, as I'm sure you know, he simply had enough, you know, that thought it was time, thought he should go. Shockingly, the miners around him began to nod in assent. You have us breathing accelerated. The aides behind him now drew their fingers across their throats at the miners or put a finger to their lips. It was far too late. Good God, he knows. It was truly amazing that Yazov managed to keep an even tone. But the aides could not see the twisted look of anger and deep sadness on his face when he said, I have questions. Come with us and fetch the Tata, wherever he is. Oh boy. The great trial awaits. Nice. I like that. We could actually use that political power. The West not want I don't want that to hurt us because I really. Yeah, oh no, no. Seize the arsenal. Improved academic base, if you'd like to read about that, go right ahead while I read about this next focus for us. Happy 1971, everyone. Underneath the liberated city of Sictivkar lies a treasure trove of old chemical weapons dating back to the first trial. Despite the relative age of these formulas and their inefficiency compared to our newer concoctions, they can still serve the Russian nation well if used liberally. For what is the purpose of a massive stockpile they will sit in underground depots throughout their entire service life? Authorization of fire chemical shells and direct chemical airstrikes will be delegated to commanders on the ground under the conditions of your position is in danger of being overrun. Of course, by foreign forces. As part of Plan Hydra, up to prevent the Rash Russian National Army's leadership from being crippled by a decapitation strike on command centers. Of course, the definition of foreign is dependent on one's loyalty to the Russian nations. Rumors have emerged from the wastes of eastern Siberia of pretender warlords attempting their own petty limitations to the very ideology of that that can sign Russia to ruin. Even if such subhuman filth make claim Russian nationality by blood, their actions prove that they are little better than Hitlerites to our west and deserve to face the full might of our arsenal. Absolutely. More guns, anybody? Only the best guns for us. And of course, academic base. Very nice. I get more alpha too. And research speed and cap. I like that. I really, really like that. What are we missing? Tanks. APC is looking good, though. I got plenty of t guns and artillery for now. And I made sure all these guys are 40 combo with as well, so. Nice and thick faulties. Approaching emigre scientists. Eh? Well, that's alright. See, is the arsenal. Voice not wanna. I just, I can't do that. As much as I want that political power and stability, I just can't do that yet. Uh, the Sixth Circle? Let's do this one. Source uranium deposits. Since its inception in the era of the Great Patriotic War, the atomic bomb has changed the world. It made the defeat of the, of the British possible and smeared the, seared the fingers of the American giant. The emperors of Germany and Japan stand upon foundations burnt to a heart and crisp by the fires of atomic annihilation. For Russia to be great. For Russia to rise. For Russia to avenge the deaths and suffering of the Great Patriotic War, the League needs to acquire an atomic bomb. However, the completion of a proper war had his years away, a sad fact that even the Cobrak recognizes. However, not all roads of power have to be pure. A dirty solution would suffice if the cleaner methods would not do. In this case, a dirty bomb. Nuclear scientists might call it a hack job, engineers might call it sloppy. However, in the face of a deterrent, the Germans shall never impinge on Russia's sovereignty ever again. It matters not where, what is pure and what is dirty, only what is effective. Alright, so 1970s stuff. We did this, we're doing that, we got this, we could probably use this. Uh, resources. Actually, we're doing okay on resources for now, so let's do military construction then. Seize the arsenal. And let's just go ahead and keep building more readouts when we can. So let's save our political power for now. Consult with Olchinikov. Olchinikov. After the League's decision to expand on Project Chimera, Glavkark Glakovark Yozlov has grown interested in the results of experiments that he has done. Nerve gases that can kill within minutes. Far beyond the scope of old mustard gases in the like housed the, within the bowels of the old Komi Republic. Agents that can def defoliate entire forests if the formula is correct. As with all the League's efforts towards vengeance, all of Ovchinikov's work is in progress. Perhaps there might be a way to accelerate it. The League shall provide test subjects with materials for feedback of the pot potency of the chemical agents. This would come from the worst of the worst of society. Bandits, criminals, and murders of the lowest sort. Glakovark would do Russia's service in reading these elements of... Of Chinnikov would be pleased. No more rats, only men. Uranium exposure. Reports have been floating in from the doctors assigned to the redemption brigades or that strange symptoms have been begun to surface amongst the units who have been sent to assist in mining operations. Bloody urine. Catastrophic kidney failure and unprecedented rates of cancer have ravaged the redemption brigades. With nearly 80 casualties today from whatever is causing this. Though most are baffled, one doctor in particular has speculated that the damage is so bad it's the thought of they were digging uranium with a shovel, which isn't far off from reality. High Command is ecstatic at the success of the operation, having expected casualties three times greater than what we're seeing. Many additional redemption brigades have been rerouted to assist with the uranium extraction operations now that we know that the losses are well within acceptable parameters. This is much cheaper than safety equipment. And her dad is not looking nearly as bad now. Ah, I gotta love it. You just gotta love it. Oh, look at that. All right, so can't do that. And mobilize Air Force. Sure, why not? <clears throat> all right, so we, these planes are looking all right. Uh, hold on, let's, let's 
close that out. There you go. Now, do we have any more? Yes. Which is not great. They're still literally early cast. But it'll have to do. Well, if that's going to take so long, I'm going to grab... Oh, research facilities so beginning to improve. Why not? And we can grab this one, too. Monthly game, why not? All right. And the fourth thesis. Oh, the oh the end of the long winding road nears, and at that end lies our final vengeance. Dostup zapression. Oh, uh oh, maybe that's not good to click on. We have about a week left. Um, academic base. Yeah, I mean we might as well do that one too, right? Six days left. Nice. The Sixth Circle. Major of Chilnikov. I s said the Glukovric before politely being cut off by us. No need, Glukovric. It's perfectly natural for your revulsion when you look at what we're doing here. Interjected Major Yuri of Chinikov, opening a door for his guests. It's certainly not the most civilized operation sometimes. He glanced back at Yazov briefly as he entered a long windowed hallway before continuing. Block 5 is our most advanced facility, explained the Major. Yazov glanced down to the line of windows and his stomach seized up instinctively. On the other side, we're in various states of deterioration. The husks of human beings, a gaunt man, splayed with a, across a cot with horrible le lesions covering his skin. A feverish woman huddled in the corner of her cell. A crumpled up rag of a person crouched on the floor and coughing helplessly his body. Yazov had to look away. <clears throat> his host continued his narration. There were several cells, for instance, of the testing of a hemorrhagic hemorrhagic smallpox strain, codenamed India, obtained from an anonymous seller. This team had been slowly breeding the virus to be resistant to almost every antibiotic available in Russia. Upon mentioning this fact, Ovchinikov had turned to Yazov and, like a schoolboy telling a, pur a prurient joke to a friend, had suggested that with a smoke that the medical aid being brought uh, sought abroad by the Klaklovrik might come in handy for this. Then he directed Yazov's attention to a darkened room at the end of the hall, turning on the lights to reveal a nasty, nearly skeletal man, hunched over an ex exercise bike of some kind. This man, as the Major explained, was being used to testify that or test the eff efficacy of pathogens on soldiers in combat. Having been injected, lengthy stints on the bike simulated physical training, while the psychological stress was replicated by firing live rounds over his head at random intervals. The Major waited for Yazov's comment, but it was met with only silence. Yazov wanted to be proud, but he just felt empty. Jesus, holy cow. <clears throat> Alright, I'll we'll finally do this one. Waste not one. We'll do this one um, in just a little bit. So we'll do this one. Ooh, construction speed plus 5%. With a great trial, every gun, bullet, and every tire will matter. As such, in the reclamation government, there can be no such thing as a scrap or excess. Excess pots and pans can be melted into bullet, rubber can be made into tires, and if frivolities left behind in the waste can be used as silk stockings can be used to make parachutes. The people must understand this all cadres will be ordered to donate any excess materials they find. There will be no scrap yards, no excess waste. Everything that can be used will be used. But ever cadre miss a few pans, if it means that they will have a few more bullets when the Great Trial comes. So we actually lose political power, lose consumer goods factories, slightly better cap, more output, military factory construction speed goes up, and civilian factory construction speed goes down, which pains me. Oh. Alright, up next I'll do TMN. Why not? And since we're able to do that too. Uh, how much political power? 0.82. It's going to go even further down, which sucks, but whatever. Oh, more divisions? Oh, wait, hold on. Ah, these are the divisions that we really wanted here. Um, we also are leading those guys military austerity. That's kind of fine to cut down for now. I want to know how strong Svedlovsk is right now, though, too. Uh, I'll throw you because you have a kind of sense. How strong are you guys, actually? Led by Porkrishkin, authoritarian democracy. Not that much manpower, and quite a few divisions, so we're actually pretty much potentially roughly equal, so. The last war. We've been preparing for this, but it seems like the Siberian Federation has been too. In fact, the forces have been concentrating heavily on the border these past few days, and everyone can see that writing on the wall. Only two forces remain in Russia. The war that is to come shall be bloody and long, but the triumphant one will be forced to unify our people once and for all. Well, not unless I do something else too. So uh, we still got to wait on that, which is fine. And then the Great Trial awaits. The clock is winding down. It's very soon, very, very soon, the clock, Great Trial will be upon us. The Huns will seek nothing less than a complete annihilation. The only thing that will prevent that is Comrade Yazov and the Black League's reclamation government. The people must understand this is that we are fighting to protect them. But more importantly, we are fighting to avenge them. Every soldier slaughtered, every mother murdered, every child tossed into the inferno by the Teutonic hordes. They will all be avenged by a thousandfold. We will ensure that the Huns die screaming, ruining the day they ever lied uh, upon our people. Russia shall be avenged. We have no war support, too. Crud. <laughs> How's the debt looking now? Uh, cut that. It's not really worth cutting it. Oh, there goes a shawl. Uh, it's not bad. It's really not that bad, but, you know, things cost more money. 
Which sucks. Why do things just have to cost money? Why? Second night of the long knives? Oh, Borman. They last forever. Screw, screw the roads right now. We need more civilian factories. Great Charlie Whites and the fourth thesis. What's going on? There's a lot of lag. Okay, oh, it ran is falling apart. So I'm not really sure this is the long, the end of the long winding road nears, and at that end lies our final vengeance to a stoop of the oppression. Iran is war. So it was recommended that in the past few episodes that I do not cause nuclear war. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to win the war against the Soviet Federation. Totally cool, totally fine. And then we'll call that like the official ending for us, and then the epilogue within the same episode here will be us trying to basically causing World War Three. That's probably what we're going to have to do. Because if you play it's opti, you just got to cause World War Three. And until TNO2 comes out, that's the best that we can do in terms of a war between us and Borman, which will probably end up in World War Three, anyways. Okay, they go to war with us. All right, and we got better guns too. Let them roll. Actually, since we got more planes, uh, do we have any spare hundred? No, we don't. That's off. Whatever. That'll be fine. Maybe I shouldn't cut the budget, but that's all right. Let's grab some more breakthrough. Let's take a look. Let's see. We killed off four thousand. They've up to fifty-one divisions. We have thirty-eight. Excuse me. So we'll see what happens. Just because I don't think they have core everything yet. Root out the remnants. Oh, they did core a lot of already. So the fourth thesis. Uh, review the Black Mountain. In Magnogorsk, above the smokestacks of a of black clouds over industrial waste of the Russian atmosphere, stands a black mountain. To its peak, it looks down upon the earth like an eye over every inch of land surrounding it. Dug into the crags by its sides are Lysensko's laboratories, where he once contrived to experiment to make supermen out of starving, dying subjects. The Black League does not have serious sympathies in Lysenko's theory. There's only once, there's only so much cruelty that can be done in the name of the science before it borders on idiocy. Idiocy. However, the research complexes have the potential. Built to withstand nuclear blasts, Lysenko's paranoia shall ensure a safe basis of operations for the League's HQ and High Command. The Black Mountain shall be black again as the League drifts over its uh, peaks. For a thesis. Yazov's mind was not his own. Verbal shrapnels rebounded in his head endlessly, cutting away any semblance of a coherent thought into ribbons as he paced his darkened coffee alone. He relieved or relived the moment for the thousandth time, repeating what the gosh darn miner had asked him, how he angrily demanded clarification as his entourage looked and on in horror. <clears throat> How the miner had continued saying some relative of his was on duty that night and had seen it happen. As karma as a king, a green. The men were dead now, but he couldn't help but kill their words. Words eating away at his mind like a corrosive poison. He had to know. Another day. <clears throat> Karpachev's old Tatar egg caught in two men regarding the Glock Culverk with pity even as he languished in his manacles. <clears throat> he has up remembered how he stood up, ramrodded, ramrod straight, staring down at the prostrate yet defiant man from the mere feet away. And how the man had nonchalantly told him how he was all true. He wanted to go out on his own terms, the Tartar had said. He said to embrace the inevitable. He had taken control, the Tartar had added, mocking Yazov again. The man was now gone, but even without their vessel. The cursed words still floated about, haunting him. Confidence was now draining away, being replaced by a growing shame that he was letting this hound him all at all. A great trial awaited, he told himself. He had greater things to deal with, a greater mark to leave on history than inevitable. Yazov's mind crystallized into absolute clarity. The conclusion was simple, the logic plan. Just as Karbyshev had seen the inevitability of death, and thus embraced it in his own terms, so should Russia not simply wait for the great trial, but start it when she was ready. He saw his path forward, his decisive mark in history. The warm winds of destiny were at his back, overriding his own doubts as he looked up to the plaque on the wall, bearing the three Karbyshev at theses. Now would be, there would be a fourth. I have a purpose, and miles to go before I sleep. <clears throat> How are we doing this war? It seems like we're doing fairly okay. They're pretty strong divisions, maybe, but... Let's see. They actually might be 40 combo with as well, so... How many maybe we lost? A thousand... Are we... Going or not? That's a real question. Are we going or not? Beat him up. Now, attacking into East Siberia isn't always fun. Because sometimes it's actually kind of a real big old pain in the butt. But, you know, whatever. Sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice. And seven with more infrastructure. Awesome, awesome. Oh, there goes the tanks. Force them to die, tanks. Force them to die. Oh, you have an upgrade. Eh, guerrilla fighter's not really worth it. He's an infantry leader. Oh, I'm just going to get the capital immediately. All right. Well, we've lost 3,000 versus... Oh, Jesus. 75, 76,000 already. Well, I have the capital. That's pretty nice, I'd say. 
near the Black Mountain Underground Military Depots. At the time of the momentous events, it's easy to forget that the leadership of the Black League does not comprise the whole of it. The Russian National Army, the, its, its ranks lined by loyal men as well as women, serve the interests of the League far better than it can ask for. The leadership is secure in the Black Mountain, but these soldiers need protection against atomic retaliations of the Germans. The Klakovrik needs to shelter these soldiers through the harshness of the Fourth Thesis. When the time comes of burning comes, well, when it does come, we shall give the army the ultimate honor. Once the dust settles over the quiet earth and Russia's avenge, they shall climb out of their underground complexes. The flag of the League shall wave above the ruins of the Volkshalle, the symbol of Russia's ultimate triumph, above a world of ashes. Dust and embers blows aloft the ruins of a black flag of victory. Very good. Inspecting the Black Mountain, of course. Valerie and Alec, and Alec watches the rusted metal gates of the Black Mountain turn inwards, its hinges howling the whole way down. Dressed in hazmat suits and gas masks, their breathing seemed to echo in the walls of this place. It was dark, only with their electric lights piercing the gloom. They looked at the walls of the moss that had grown over the concrete, like greenish plaque on an infected tooth. A transparent film formed over it, a liquid that was steeped through years of non-maintenance. Drip, drip, drip. The ceiling seemed to perspire, perspire in fear of what it contained. Alec, Valerie said, I get the feeling this place isn't, ain't friendly. Friendly, friend, fry, free. His voice echoed within the vast chambers of the mountain's research complex. Did you hear that? I did. Alec seemed more amazed than afraid of this place, although Valerie saw his left arm tremble. The fingers that held the flashlight were a little unsteady. I've heard stories. My family lived in Svedlovsk. People who go here, Alec said, his flashlight drifting towards the ceiling. Do not come back, either researcher or subject. That infamous, huh? You're from Zatels. You wouldn't know. I guess. They walked inside, the concrete crunching under the heels of the boots. Did you smell that? Is that rotten meat? <clears throat> Alec cut him off. Better if you don't describe it at all. Far better. If you say so, Alec. What's going on down here, son? Why are you losing? We don't lose in the Great Trial. Or when the Great, great Trial will come. Either we will win or we will perish. But if we perish, we take every single German we can with us. It seems like we're doing relatively well, though, still. So... We killed off 140,000 of them, and we killed off at least a few divisions. We've only lost 8,000 so far, which is pretty good. Enhanced industrial construction. So that stuff is good. Resources, I suppose we can do that too. It's only 94 days, right? Underground military depots, 5% more construction speed, and way less factory uh, bombing vulnerability. Nice. Over here, hey, that's looking so much better. Wow. So much better for the debt. Then again, where we're going, that won't really matter probably too much. <clears throat> Finally, it feels like we're actually doing pretty well with our stuff. Uh, actually, I'm going to add like four more here just because you know, the Great Trial is going to need it. Whatever. Yeah, seriously, this is not too bad. They've already killed almost a quarter million of them. Let's take a look. Nova Sabirsk, still got to play as you. Yeah, they're running out of manpower. They have 101 factions, which would be great to add to our own stockpile. Uh, they got a couple planes, CAS. <clears throat> Anti tank artillery's out. They have no more guns. They're out of they're out of stuff, except for like trucks. They have some strategic bombers too. They have a few transport helicopters, so. Whatever we kill now, they won't be able to replace. Samara, that'd be good to do. Thanks for doing a great job, I'd say though. Are we missing anything else? Fighters. Fighters and main battle tanks. So let's go with this. And go like that. There you go. Boost it up. I don't care what the deficit is. We need more political... Well, we don't really, really need more political power. But we want that extra construction spending. As well as that... Well, construction speed. <clears throat> and stability. It's not much stability, but it's worth it. At least for now. There you go. Keep it at 6. Keep it at 6. Ah. Shaw is falling apart. Nice. Yeah, at this point, we lost 16,000, which is not... We have 40 divisions. Yeah, 40, not bad. Almost half a million are dead. We killed off, like, 20 divisions, probably. Not bad. Why don't you guys kill these people off, too? Oh, they already did. Nice, good job, guys. 40 combo with infantry. Super good. I'm going to do some of this, too. Why not? We're going to need against the Teutons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we've got this going on as well, which is awesome. Budget-wise, hey, we finally have a deficit. Finally again. I love it. Are you guys moving in? You guys just hanging out? What's going on here, guys? Would you like to move? Uh, at this point, you know what? We don't have to slash military spending for now. Hold on, hold on. You're not allowed to lose. Who said you're allowed to lose? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Half a million are dead. Beautiful. You know, we're winning anyways. Just cut it anyways. Why not? Six 
600,000 dead Siberians are dead. Well, you yeah. know, dead Siberians are probably already dead. 74,000, or 74% of the way there. Pretty nice, I'd say. Pretty darn nice. <clears throat> I wonder what the German soldiers are like, because actually, we don't have enough soldiers for the front, so... This is why I wanted to make sure we got up here. You know what? Rush them. Rush them out if you can. Because these guys are going to stack up everyone that... Oh. I don't think I've seen this in a while. Oh, Israel's there. Oh, the Hellenic State. Oh, Turkey took over part of Cyprus, too, huh? Well, no manpower. Ah, that helped out with the death so much. There, there goes those people. That's fine, fine, fine. Ah, it's looking beautiful. Irkutsk shall be ours. Actually, do we good? We didn't go as far as we wanted to yet. Nope. That's all right. We'll get there eventually. We're still trying to move in, albeit a little slowly. Not bad. Less than twenty divisions for them. Awesome. Uh, what are we missing? Eh, we're not really missing too much, except tanks, of course. But that's fine. Military construction, beautiful. I haven't got this yet. Nice. Resource extraction. After that, we're still using really not great artillery. <laughs> <clears throat> That'll be nice. And this will be done too, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. When's the next time we can do Strike Siberia? Well, I'm already at war with them, so it doesn't matter. Uh, about less than three weeks, that's not too bad. Advance the phase, well, we gotta wait. No, no, you can't lose here now, guys. You can't lose. I wish I did some more stuff for the National Readout System. Obviously, we're not really ready for it, but eh, this is fine. So, anyways, doesn't really matter too much. There you go. Ah, yes. Slash that debt. Come on, guys. You got those chubby little legs. Let's, let's start moving them. I'm sure supplies here aren't great, but still, it doesn't mean you can go super slow. We want to kill more of them. Ah, uh, they're close to capitulating now. 94% of the way there. Do we get... Yeah, we must have gotten a Kutsk. Nice. Alright, let's pause it. Grab some of this. More land added tech will be very, very helpful. Zatelst. Man, these take forever to make. Oof. Do we make more divisions or something? We have less manpower now. Maybe it's just resistance. It's probably just resistance and such. Good. Russian National Reclamation Government. I'm getting a lot more political power, too. Securing the people. Awesome. Actually, how are we doing over here? Everything is still going up, which is really nice. Uh, let's see. Research facilities. Is anything close to, like, 240 for the development? Not really there, but it's improving. Mass mechanization, actually. It's not too bad. Modern agriculture would be great to get to. Poverty rate is looking not terrible. <clears throat> there goes the Dofar Rebellion. Uh, industrial equipment is trying to get better as well. Factory complexes would be good to go to modern industrial equipment. Up here, no... And we're not really that close. Spartan Discipline is already the best one we have, so... Not too shabby, I would say so myself. 70 million, looking better and better and better. Good, good. Come on, you're almost done. And time to throw on one more, because we can. <clears throat> there goes the Arabian Republic. There you go. Brought another one immediately, anyways. Italy acquires nuclear weaponry. Why not us? Oh, man. Construction complete. Yazov ran his hand through the rough concrete of the first level. The glare of the fluorescent lights was just as uncomfortable, but he was not here to review the amenities. This is to be Russia's future. This had to be Russia's future. For a second, he allowed himself to feel safe and ready. Nothing could touch him here. This network of these bunkers that have been built would secure the Russian people against any eventuality. These small rooms, barely large enough for three stacked cots and shelves, were a great accomplishment for the program of national action. Survival of the Russian nation, whatever the cost. He'd always spoken about it in words, but and always believed it, but the bunkers were his words made manifest. The last flickered off for the moment. When they came back on, Yazov already started back up. Started back up the stairs towards the elevator. There was so much still to be done. Tons of concrete and snaking tunnels do not prepare a nation for war. He didn't even know if the bunkers would work, yet he had claimed all claimed to all assembled, assembled that the security was guaranteed forevermore. He climbed faster. What a joke if he had played on all of them, and on himself, and thinking that he could stop the inevitable. He, he was nothing, just a shadow of garbage of a pretender playing the savior for all to see. He arrived at the elevator, adjusted his cap, and pushed a button. There would be no time for these thoughts on the surface just as well. Our security is guaranteed forevermore. Omsk Oblast shall be rendered impervious to nuclear attacks. Nice. Awesome. One, two, three, four, five, six. Once everything hits a fan, though, it won't even matter, right? Spend, 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 son. 
We gotta build, build, build. Actually, if we spend more civilian spending, then technically, shouldn't the national readout system, like, we're spending more for construction, so these should be rebuilt faster and faster and faster, right? Hey, we made two more divisions, nice. Well, bad news, I just finished my coffee. Oh, terrible, I know. More armor, more breakthrough. I feel a little late doing that by now. <clears throat> Trying to improve our armor and such. Oh, is that it? And there we go, my friends. Time to spend all our PP, or at least a lot of our PP, on this stuff too. I want to get up. Uh, let's keep it like that for now. Uh, there we go. Forty-six. Well, let's do this as well. Gary for Axkomasaya Muscovine, maybe. This is not going to end well for anybody. So. A lot of losses, and not a lot of good things. Oh, we have some dockyards, finally. Here, have a convoy. Or a few. Uh, we could integrate them for one, two, so many days ago. Unify the motherland! Alright, let's pause it. The Black League marches on. The lamps are going out all over Eurasia, and we shall not see them lit again in a lifetime. Okay, that might be it. No. Oh. A little disappointing, but okay. Let's see. We can still do this stuff. We're losing 0 0.01, which is not... Oh, look at that manpower. Wow. Well, then. Nothing unique here, of course, as well. Um. So, now that we've unified all of Russia... Ah, there we go. Let's do this one. And Gurdjieff Vasto. <clears throat> Oh, uh, do we have anything else here? Not yet. So the sky was out for him, the darkness was on the face of the clouds, and as the access door leading out of the command center's rooftop slammed shut, Yazov was once again alone. Adrenaline sublimated into the mist, his body cooled by the soft drizzle. The tramp of boots echoed off Omsk's concrete carapace as a cadre filled it on the square below. Sakharovsky, Savinstev, Sik, uh, Steklar, six others chosen by name, they were the first to hear about the thesis, sworn to secrecy beyond any hope or knowledge in this league. Miles of barbed wire and layers within layers of security clearances is still had to come to this. A meeting on the rooftop, five stories in the air, where only the wind and sky could easily drop. <clears throat> only hours ago, Yazov had felt sick to his stomach. What if this was all insanity, and even then, until that moment of truth, the thesis existed was in dizzyingly tenuous. Only a single heartbeat away from erasure, but now the truth would be borne by ten men, and none a hundred, and one day by all Russians. Yet... A new, even more sickening dread overtook Yazov. He could feel the great colossus groaning beneath his feet, awakened from its slumber. He could see the leviathan stirring behind the gray sky, sky's gray sheets of rain. The wheels were now turning, ge gears turning at decades of grime, rotten decay. Now perhaps he could stop what he started, uh, perform millions rally to the call, but soon it would be beyond control of any man. It would grow and grow until a nation's wrath blotted out the sun. The thought of it was exhilarating but terrifying. Was he a mere man against such a will, such a great machine? In those primal depths of his gut, he feared that it would swallow him whole. And so, as the bone-chilling rain ran from languid skies, the master of Russia turned around, opened the door, and resigned himself to a fate unknown. The great machine has been set in motion. Oh, boy. And that is technically the end with the so Dusk approaches the new order. It is what it is. So, cool. So, technically, that is where we're going to end the campaign. But for the fun part of it, let's cause World War III. Just because we can. So, this is officially the end. And in 1972, we will go to war once our soldiers are on the border. Now, I don't think Muscovine is probably that strong. Hoffman, oh, maybe they are. Uh, let's see, the 41, the 41 divisions. They might actually be pretty good. Even though they, they are using quite a few, most of the divisions, or majority of their divisions, or a good chunk of their divisions are like infantry, and of intel. Oh, they have no divisions up there. So we'll see what happens. Night vision, so. And I will have to use cons commands in here, so. You know what? I'll see you when we are just about ready to go. Well, everyone, it is April 1st, 1973, and I've just gone to war with Reichskommissariat Muscovine, and, oh, I guess we could start a nuclear war.
Oh, look at this. Our nuclear weapons are the most powerful tools we have to fight a war. Out of a fear of mutually assured destruction, we've been wary of using these awe-inspiring methods of total annihilation, but it seems that all other options have failed. Nuclear fire is the way to winning a war, and in these times, these measures, it must be necessary to protect our nation, even at the possible risk of the collapse of civilization, resulting in a nuclear apocalypse. Which sounds like fun. As you can see, 16, 15, 15, 15, 15. We have 76, 40 combo at the infantry divisions. We got 447 divisions. Um, we're making a profit or not having a deficit every single quarter or every time we get money. Our debt is lower. Our GDP is higher. We have 16 divisions. It's time to move on in. And it looks like we're doing pretty darn well immediately. We've got off not enough of them yet. And every single one of these Germans has to die. Oh, we're at war with Iran as well. Okay, well, okay. Well, good luck with that. Um, not bad so far. We've got off 13,000 of them. And we do have the cyber broken for Germany, so we will use them whenever we can get there. So I'm not expecting too many things to happen so far, so we'll see what happens. I really want the tanks to do really, really well, though. Civilian budget boost doesn't matter at the time of this recording. Just keep spending more money. And what do we have here? Uh, incentivize skilled workers. Why not? Why not? We got plenty of political power since we have no focus to do anyways. So we'll see what happens. Paulusburg. Uh, guys... You should all be engaged to go like crazy right now. I want you all to go nuts. All the way to Germania. There we go. Now see what happens here. Um, if you guys would like to, you're moving up there, just help them out. There you go. Kosakstadt. Let's see, we've lost 4,000, we cut off 40,000. Not bad so far. Air superiority wise, we're not doing great. Which makes sense since we are fighting the entire German, you know, Air Force. That's alright. Let's see how, what happens in Moscow. How are the tanks doing? They're doing relatively okay-ish. They lost 12,000, they lost 73,000. Uh, I don't think Moscow means that's strong. Uh, they, they're, they're doing okay. They have up to 162 divisions. Uh, half a million manpower. Uh, you guys are 110. So we'll see what happens. If we need to, we can launch nuclear weapons if we really, really want to. It would help if I didn't cut military spending too, so there is that. Oh, wait, what? No, no, no. Why did you do that, game? It's because it's lagging so... just got too gosh darn hard. And we have no stability and no force support. Go figure. Alright, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and call in the Cypher. I guess we did Japan as well. There you go. There you go. Man, it's kind of laggy. And this is a... Massive front we have to fight too, so we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. We're gonna start losing more, sol more and more soldiers. 150,000 dead Germans, for the most part, which is pretty nice. Jaroslavl, however you pronounce it. Yeah, no, force the attack. Also, with us, we're gonna run out of manpower. We actually improved the poverty rate too, so that's actually pretty good, nice, I'd say. We actually improved the poverty rate, so that's how come we're making more money too. Let's go and cut down that. Very good. How many dead Germans do we have? Only 221,000. That's not enough. Come on, we need more. It just, it just laggy. That's all it is. It's just going to take some time. Keep building the stuff up here. We're not done yet. Start a nuclear war. No, 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 no. Let's see what happens first. Uh, tanks. Tanks. For love of God, you just go in there. Oh, yeah, they're doing last stand as well, so. It's good. The AI. It just loves doing last stand now. I don't know what's wrong with it. But it loves, loves, loves last stand. We should be, be able to beat these guys up, even if we don't have air superiority. So, naval department, not bad. Yeah, they got loads of planes. They've been shooting down a lot of our planes. Military officer, good. Boost it up. We need all that extra manpower right now. Extra divisions, throw them on the line. And for now, since we need all this extra manpower, I, I wanted to make a lot of divisions here, as you can see. Uh, tanks, let's cut them down too, because that costs even more manpower, so. Oh, look at encirclement. Not bad. Not bad. Just kill them off, guys. Seriously, just kill them off. Alright, so they've suffered almost half a million casualties. We've suffered almost 200,000. So that's actually not too bad. We have Palosberg under us. Oh, good gord. Gord? Good lord. That's not looking good down here now, is it? Now, manpower wise, how are you guys looking? 10,000? Not, not good. 11,000? Not good. Ukraine's got enough. Ostpreußen doesn't have enough. These guys are not looking great either, so. We'll see. What do we have over here? Accelerate? Oh, yeah. Accelerate everything we can. Just going to spend all the money we got, or political power. It's basically money. 
Tanks, go, 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 go. Kill every single one of them off. Must give you much fall. And once they fall, that would be really nice. That removes 26 divisions from them. Actually, Germany doesn't have that many divisions. Up to 127 max? That is not bad for us. Come on. They're just Germans. Especially with the Spartanic discipline that we do have. Actually, we, we did so well, it actually went up again. Which I wish it was another buff for, but whatever. We'll deal with it. Anyone have upgrades? We, we should, should, should seriously have some upgrades here. Infantry expert? Yeah, that's good. Nice. Anything for you guys? No, that's disappointing. Yeah, we're definitely hitting a snag here, which really sucks. Just because we don't have enough divisions. That's the most... Probably That's probably just it. There you go. Once we shatter all their manpower, it would be more than fine. Help out with the anti-tank stuff. I said help out. Don't leave them. High and dry. Come on, man. Hey. Oh, we have a lot of debt now. A lot more debt, but whatever. We've lost 300,000. They've lost 700,000. Come on, if we can get back... Oh, we got Moscow. Honestly, like... Yeah, I guess it makes sense of why it's not cores of ours. So, it makes sense. Why they would not be considered cores. Good. And if we can't win, I'll just nuke, just nuke them. Well, that's pretty much the main goal here, I guess. Good. Come on, Muscovine. Die, die, die. Thanks, you gotta be doing better than this. Your lines are actually pretty darn spread out. At this point, I'm just gonna go and come down here as well. We gotta cut these guys off. No, 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 no. I hate how laggy Hoi 4 gets. God, whenever there's Hoi 5, they've really just gotta improve the... Make a new engine. Just make a new engine. Alright, so with this... Let's see if I can do that. We lost a lot of guys. I don't know if we'll be able to replace these guys, so... Oh, Muscovine. Oh. That might be enough to capitulate them. Probably not. 89% of the way there, huh? Alright, so are we down there yet? Or no? Come on. I gave you orders, and you refuse to do them? Wow. So be it. Drive to the sea. Or, the, really, the ocean. Or not, if you just want to refuse orders. Okay. Wow. You guys suck. I don't care if they're 40 combat widths. Let's go ahead. We're out of manpower, which really is not good. There you go. And, occupied territories, civilian oversight. That's pretty much the best we can do for about that, so. Ugh. Sucks. Almost half a million losses for us. This is ridiculous. Screw it. I'm just starting a nuclear war. I know someone said I shouldn't do it. Kill them off. Now, we're going to go. Choose the targets. Before we begin a target destruction and possibly the last actions we'll ever undertake as a nation, we must figure out a primary target for a nuclear stockpile to focus on. Doing so could possibly change the outcome of the war to our advantage. We have quite a few options for ensuring complete and total dissolution of the enemy's will to fight. Our first option lies in the direct attack of the armies of the opposing army. Although the blast may cause much damage to our formations, it will completely wipe out any chance our foes has of winning the war. Our next option is to attack the occupied territory of our enemy. Our third option is to attack their homelands directly. Most likely, this would cause them to capitulate instantly and make this war winnable. Or, if we have enough weapons, we can just simply choose to attack everything at once. Everything at once. Uh, I don't want to choose the targets. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Honestly, like, we should have the ability to... First of all, hold on. We should... Uh, where is it? For the military stuff. Service bar requirement makes sense. But... Uh, scraping the barrel, adult serve, service bar requirement. Yeah, all, really more all adult serve we should have had. Now combat rolls make sense. Kill them all. Eh, that's, that makes sense. Total supervision, you know. Kill them all makes sense, though. Training methods. We have advanced training, which does make sense as well, which is good. Segregated, which makes sense for here. And no draft exemptions. Pretty much. I mean, we, we really do need more manpower for this. I want to target uh, now that their homelands. So, because, I mean, there's not enough manpower here. We just, we need more manpower to do this. So, and obviously, you know, when Tino 2 comes out, final decision. We have offered peace to our enemies. If we have offered peace, and if the peace is not taken, we would destroy them with nuclear hellfire. However, in the ignorance, they've called us foolish and unwilling to use our nuclear weapons. We must now decide whether to use our nuclear weapons and deal with the consequences that come with it. Uh, destroy them. I don't care. So, I, I really don't care. Like, this is kind of ridiculous. So, here we go. Things are going to end up pretty bad. Just because... Muscovine, I don't know why they don't capitulate. They've already capitulated once, so I don't know why they just don't die. 
Incoming response, warning systems are being picked up by a wave of projectiles heading for our nation in response to a nuclear attack. Finally they die? Come on. It doesn't take a genius to figure out what has happened, although shelter warnings are being given out to civilians now. We do not expect to survive this strike. One thing is clear, however, nuclear war has just begun and the world shall be changed forever. God help us all. That doesn't make any sense why Muscovy just doesn't shatter instantly. Because they've already died once, so that needs to be definitely looked at. Just because once you take Moscow, I mean, it should just fall apart again. It's already dead as it is, so... So that just doesn't make any sense in my mind. Like, why? Why don't they just die almost instantly once you take Mus Moscow and Brauschitzstadt and Paulusburg? They should capitulate immediately. Just because it's it's such a you know broken government over there. Especially after the Civil War. Ostland makes a little bit more sense because they'd be more stable. Rex comes around Ukraine. Yeah, so kind of okay. Caucasian? They should die as well. I mean, seriously, like, let's be real here. <laughs> With them leading down there, so... The amount of manpower they can pull up apart doesn't make any sense, but regardless, uh, with all this lag, there's not much that we can really do. We've got some dockyards, some military factories, but this is the most appropriate way to end uh, the campaign, even though it's kind of hard to see everything. It's, it's, it's only unique map mode where you can't really see much that's happened. It is what it is, but this is pretty much what the end of the campaign here. If you enjoyed it, as my mouse wheel is spinning blue because the game is lagging so hard, if you're still watching this and it's not a black screen, if you liked it, uh, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you are new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and, well, there's not much else here, I guess I will see you tomorrow, in which we will be in a new, different campaign, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.